some glad morning when this life is o'er. I fly away, fly away, happy fly away to all. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once more, we've come to you. This is Sound Doctrine, Seven Studies. Sound Doctrine, Seven Studies. We are continuing on our topic about baptism. And on our previous videos, we talk about the commandment of baptism and how baptism is supposed to be done. So today's video, we are going to look at who is to be baptized and why we have to be baptized. So we want to look at who is the candidate for baptism and then the importance, why you need to be baptized. And then other things will also come on. So I hope you will enjoy the lesson and everything will look very nice as we try our best to bring to you the true gospel of Christ so that in the end all of us will enjoy in the heavenly kingdom. So with that wasting time, let's go to our studies today. Our today is why should one be baptized and then who qualifies? to be baptized. Why should one be baptized and who qualifies to be baptized? So let's take the why first, the why question. Now, on the why question, on the board here, you see baptism connected to Christ. It's a baptism is necessary for the remission of sins because it is directly connected to Christ. You have to understand this the importance of baptism for the remission of sins because everything in the New Testament baptism connects you to Christ so on the board here you will see here that here is baptism you are baptized into Christ Romans chapter 6 verse 4 know you that as many of you as have been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. You were buried with him in baptism into Christ. Matthew chapter 28. It is a, uh, it's the authority of Christ. Christ said, go ye all or to all nations and then teach them and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them the word of God is connected to Christ. You are baptized into the death of Christ. Romans 6, verse 3. So when when you so during the act of baptism, your baptism represents the death of Christ on the cross. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 6. You are baptized in order to be saved. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. This is the words from our leader himself. Mark 16 verse 16. You are baptized to put on or to be clothed with Christ. You are baptized to put on or to be clothed with Christ. Galatians 3 verse 27. That as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we are looking at the why you should be baptized. I know you, you hear a lot of stories on the TV and other places that baptism is not important. And we are trying to debunk all those stories here. And if you listen very attentively, you will understand. And you can go and make the research yourself and make your own personal judgment on the, on the lessons and see where the truth lies. So Galatians 3, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, he said, baptism now saves you. He said, baptism now saves you. This is, this is an inspired apostle, an inspired person, speaking from the mouthpiece of God. 
telling you that when you believe, when you repent, and when you allow yourself to be baptized, baptism now saves you. Now, for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter answered, Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 verse 38, in Colossians chapter 2 verse 2, you are buried with him in Christ Jesus Christ. So he wrote this to the Colossians and he wrote this again to the Romans that we are buried with him. In us, chapter 22 verse 16, this is the convention of Paul. He said, why are you wasting your time, Paul? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sin calling on the name of the Lord. So, why should one be baptized? You can't forego all these scriptures and make argument or try to defend a certain doctrine that baptism is not essential or is not necessary for salvation. My brother and my sister who is listening to me, you want to be saved and someone is presenting to you the truth about the gospel of Christ. And I hope you investigate these things yourself and then you find the truth about it. You can't forego all the scriptures. Now let's look at conversion here. Before a person comes to Christ, you see, you are in the power of darkness, Colossians 1. Before you enter into Christ, you have to pass through baptism. Okay? You are, you are dead in sin. Before your sins are forgiven, you have to pass through baptism. This is baptism. You have to pass through baptism. So, so, so uh, you are not a disciple. Before you become a disciple, you have to pass through baptism. There is no way out about it. Okay? There is no way out. Whatever you have heard about your professors, it's not what the Bible is teaching. You have to pass through baptism. Before you are out of the kingdom, before you enter the kingdom, unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot. You have to be born of water. You have to pass through baptism. As 22, for your sins to be washed away and for you to become a new creature in the sight of God. As 22 verse 16, you have to wash away your sins by passing through baptism. So baptism stands very important in the sight of God. God made it that way so that each human being living on the earth who will believe in Jesus Christ will have to be baptized so that he become a new creature in the sight of God. And in doing so, all the blessings of God will be upon you. So where we have right now, I pray you a video because we want to know who qualifies for baptism. And then we have a me up over a billion people who have been baptized when in their infancy and they have reasons for that. And don't blame uh, your mothers or your fathers uh, for doing that because those spiritual leaders have given them that it's necessary for them to do that. Now we are on Sandra Tree. We want to find out whether that is okay. So who qualify for baptism? I'll play you this video and then from there we will understand a whole lot of what that is. Christ. So why baptize babies? Well, if you go back to the book of Acts, there are a couple of different instances where the disciples baptized whole households of people and whole groups of people. Those households most certainly included young children, even people we might say don't really have the ability to make a decision for Jesus. But our Protestant brothers and sisters very much associate baptism with making a decision for Jesus, and truthfully, Catholics do as well. But here's the thing, infant baptism involves 
mom and dad, the parents of a child making that decision on his or her behalf. And this is kind of a cool thing. We believe that grace works even if we don't realize that it's working. And so when an infant is baptized, we want to provide that grace and that entry point into a life of Christ. And because an infant is pretty much innocent of everything except that they still bear the mark of original sin, they're able to freely accept. There's nothing impinging in hindering that gift of grace. And that gift of grace erases the stain of original sin and allows them to become a new creation in Christ. Mom and dad in that moment promised to raise Okay. Okay, so I hope you have just watched the video about the professor teaching you about why they baptize infant, okay, and or children uh, below a age of accountability. Uh, they have risen. They say that the father and the mother can bargain on behalf of the child, and moreover, um, they want to baptize the child because the child has a sin called an original sin, or maybe I'll put it in a simple language, uh, that Adam's sin has been passed on to the child. Therefore, they want to take it off of it. So because of that, we have a large group of Christendom who baptize babies. I see, and I'm, I'm estimating about a billion of the world population who have had baptism in their infancy, in their infancy, and they think it's okay, so long as they have been told that it's okay. But since we are on some doctrine and we want to look into all these things. So here, we, we, we notice that the answer, we say we answer that the one who is qualified, we say the one who hears the word of God, comprehend the word of God, believe, repent, and, and confess Jesus Christ to be the son of God. That is the one who qualifies to be baptized. And we want to show that in the Bible. And then we can compare and see whether an infant or, or, or a little child who doesn't know left and right can qualify for this. The Bible has given us a lot of examples, especially in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said, those who ask, men and brethren, what shall you do? Peter said, they should repent. So that means that baptism stands for those who repent. If in order for you to be baptized, in order for you to come into Christ or to be baptized, you have to first repent. Repent means that you have committed some sins or some errors or you've done something against God. And now you are telling God that God forgive me and that I don't want to do that again. And we see a child or a baby or an infant do not qualify for repentance. Now, before one will go to be baptized, the person must believe. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You see, believe. You have to believe. You have to believe. And therefore, because he said, Go, he, that, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Okay, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So belief is a prerequisite of baptism. You, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, there is nothing that you can gain from Jesus Christ. And a child or a baby cannot believe. Therefore, a baby or a child is not a candidate for baptism. Let's look at the third point also. In Acts chapter 38, and as they went on there, they came to water. He said, what hinders me to be baptized? Philip said, if thou believe of all thy heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So in saying Jesus Christ is the Son of God, it's a confession of faith. He's confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So before one will be baptized, the person must confess 
that Jesus is the Son of God. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, your baptism is nothing because this is a prerequisite to baptism. So a person must confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Why? Someone who can comprehend, who can understand, will do that. An infant cannot do that. A, ch a child below the age of accountability cannot do that. Therefore, we can conclude that the child is not a candidate for baptism. And then let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 9. But God say it, the word is near you, even the word of faith which we preach. That, look at it, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, okay? But with confession is made unto salvation. So you need to confess Jesus Christ. You need to confess Jesus Christ. And this is not something a, a baby or a child can do. Therefore, confession is necessary for one to be saved. Now, let's go quickly here. For the scripture says, Whosoever believe in him shall be saved. Romans 10 verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believe and how shall they believe in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear so you have to hear the word of god you have to hear the word of god you have to comprehend you have to understand the word of god before if from the preacher and then you have to believe and all these things are things for the adult not for the child who doesn't comprehend and who cannot even talk so, who qualifies for baptism? We say an adult who wants to come to Christ, who wants to give his or her life to Christ, that person qualifies for baptism. What about infant and the little children who haven't reached the age of accountability? They don't know they are left and they don't know they are right. Do they qualify for baptism? The answer is no. Here, so we come here and say, what about infant or little children? He said, children who have not reached the age of accountability cannot be charged with sin. They have no sin. Therefore, they are not the scripture candidate for baptism. They, they, you can. So the fact is that if you were baptized when you were a baby, now you are studying to know that you need the right baptism to be done and how one is to be baptized and the command to be baptized. We learned it on the, on the previous video before this one and a whole lot of stuff over there. So you can go there and look at it. Now, one reason that children are not a candidate uh, for baptism is that they, they have no sin. Children have no sin. They have no, nothing to repent of. And Christ made that thing very clear in the scriptures. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, in Matthew chapter 18, and he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see? So when you change, if you adopt, if you change and you you be, when you change you repent and you confess your sins then god will make you like a little child and then you qualified for the kingdom okay now let's look at this here jesus said very very i said unto you except you be born again you cannot see the kingdom of god and nicodemus said how can one be born when he is old, can he enter into his mother's room? And Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot 
enter into the kingdom of God. So here, you see the kingdom of God, you see the kingdom of God. When you are converted and you become truly converted, you become a child, you become like a little child and you qualify for the kingdom of God. You qualify for the kingdom of God. Jesus said, when one is born of water and of the spirit, that's why you enter into the kingdom of God. So this is what we can demonstrate for you, for you to understand what we are trying to bring about. So to be born of water and of the spirit is equal to become like a little child. So after you have been born of water and of the spirit, and you have confessed your sins, God praises you as a little child, and therefore you qualify for the kingdom. Therefore, if that is the case, that means the little child does not need for him to be baptized because he has no sins. So you then become equal with God. So we can put it this way. I can put a little bit of something here that we have the child here and he qualifies for the kingdom, okay? And then when you are born of water, and the spirit, you also qualify for the kingdom. Therefore, when you are born of water and of the spirit, it's equal to being a child, and therefore you qualify for the kingdom. And this is very plain teaching that Christ demonstrated for us in the, in the scriptures. And therefore, a child does not need to be baptized because when the child dies, he goes to God, he goes to heaven. He doesn't need any sense to be washed away. Now we bring about the, the other argument presented. Then we say, what about being baptized to erase Adam's sin or original sin? So there is something, a group of Christendom who teaches that uh, you have, it's a large group, you, you, that sin is passed on from Adam all the way. So everyone who is born inherit that sin. And there's a whole lot of argument they make about that. The question is, is that true? Okay. The baby lying down there, is he born in sin? Is the answer true or yes? And we want to show that that is not to be said. No Bible verse teaches that Adam's sin is passed from father to son or from one person to another. Now, let's look at some of the great scriptures we can use to do this. Now, we just want to prove on this part that babies do not need to be born because they don't have any original sin. We are not treating the subject of sin in general. We are not treating it, but we just want you to understand from this. Now, we said before birth, God gives the baby a spirit. Before the baby in conception, in the womb, God has already given the baby a spirit. Numbers chapter 16, verse 22. He said, let the Lord, the God of the spirit of all flesh, the God of the spirit, the God of the spirit of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. This is what the Bible states. He said, all flesh, the spirit that are in them is from God. It's from God. So before the baby comes in the womb, God has already placed a spirit on the, on the person. Now let's look at this in further terms. In Hebrews, in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which collected us, and we give them reference. Shall we not rather be subject to the father of spirit and live? So God is the father of all our spirits and live. When God gave you the spirit, he is the father of those spirits and live. Now, so what happened to that spirit? You see, at death, this spirit comes out of you. Immediately the spirit comes out of you. You are dead. James 2. 
said that the body without the spirit is dead in James chapter 2 okay so 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 the child coming in, in the Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 he said then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it so at the point of death God the spirit goes back because it belongs to God and, and God is going to judge that spirit at the last day but we are proving that a child has a spirit at birth now little children are a gift from God God gave them in the, our parents when the child comes to the world it's a gift from God and God is not going to give a gift to a person and then God said that this gift has a sin from somewhere, from Adam, all the way. No, God gives a perfect gift. Everything God gives is a perfect gift. Now, let's look at it here. In Psalm 127, in Psalm 127 verse 3, children are a gift from God. Children are a gift from the Lord. You see, they are a reward from Him. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from God. And therefore, James 1 said, God, God gift is perfect. So God gift is perfect and children are gift from God. Therefore, children are perfect in the sight of God. They have not committed any sin. They have not inherited any, any sin. Now, because why? In James chapter 1, Verse 17, he said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and it comes down from the Father. The Father put a child in the womb. That child is a gift from him because God put his spirit in that child, and that child becomes a human being who is come to live on the earth. When God takes up that spirit, that person is dead. You are no more longer a human being. But the spirit that God is giving to you, when you are young in the womb there, is a perfect spirit. It's not a spirit of sin inherited from Adam or from any other thing. That needs to be washed away through baptism. At the point of what? Uh, of birth. No. Now, let's go down here to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. It's low. This only have I found that God has made man upright, but they have sought many inventions. God made you upright. That is it. When God created you, He made you upright, He made you perfect. It is when you have grown and then you start committing sin because sin is in the world and you commit it anyway. But in the beginning when God put you in the womb as an infant, as a little children, before the age of accountability, you are upright in the sight of God. Within that time, you are safe in the hand of God. You don't need any baptism at that time. God's spirit is with you. So he made you upright. It's when you grow up that you sort out many inventions. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15, he said, Thou was, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou were created, till iniquity was found in thee. So the word till is a limiting factor, meaning that something was there before something happened. So before the iniquity was found in thee, you were perfect in the ways of God. So before the child grows to the age of accountability and start committing sin, he was perfect in the sight of God. And therefore, he doesn't have any sin. He doesn't have any original sin. And therefore, he doesn't need to be baptized to wash that original sin. When the child grows up and then he, 
he sees that I have sinned against God. He can believe. He can understand Jesus Christ. He can know that Jesus is the Savior of the world. That is the time that the child can say, I need to be baptized. And then you can take the child into the water and then baptize the child, but not that infant. So we conclude by saying that man is responsible for his own sins, not the sin. Cancel this. Not the sin of another what? Person. You are responsible for your own sin. Therefore, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, he said, Behold, all souls are mine, as the souls of the Father. So is the soul of the Son. It's mine. The soul that sin, it shall die. God said that all souls are mine. All of human beings. I gave them the spirit. You are moving around, you are eating, you are laughing. It's God who has given you this opportunity. He said, you are his. But the soul, that sin, it shall die. It's not the sin of the father to the son. And he's going to explain it in further terms. In the same Ezekiel chapter 18, verse, uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, he's going to explain it over here. And then let's look at it. The soul that sin, the soul that sin, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So the soul that sin, it shall die. The father's son will not be passed to the son. That is what God is saying. So Adam's sin is not passed from DNA to DNA until we receive it. No. When we come to the study of sin in general, we will deal with that in more details and look at all the arguments from other sides, Psalm 51, Psalm 58, and all those arguments that could be presented. But here is to tell you that you were perfect in the sight of God and therefore you do not need uh, uh, to be a baptizing infant. So let's conclude our lesson uh, this evening. And I hope you've enjoyed the little lesson we presented to you. We have presented to you that the why of baptism is that you need baptism in order for you to get into Christ. And then the who of baptism is that anyone who believes, repent, and is baptized has to be an adult who can comprehend and understand what Christ is teaching in order for the person to be baptized into what? Into Christ. So if you have been baptized in your infancy and you have not got the right baptism, there is more chance for you now to be able, as you are studying with me here, to be able to understand and to get the right baptism. I'll give you our contact information so that you can always get somebody and then you can uh, get somebody for the person to help you. Now, here is what I can say to you, that wherever you are living, I know we have been receiving a lot of calls all over around the world. Now, wherever you are living, if you can visit the churches of Christ, which are close to you, in your village, in your town, in your city, and they will teach you a good way, the biblical way of baptism, the biblical way of baptism. If you don't have any in your village, if this is YouTube, you can go to Sound Doctrine Seven Studies and start studying some of our videos. Or you can send a, a, a Gmail to sandoctrine2 at gmail.com. Or if you are using WhatsApp, you can just send a WhatsApp message with this number. This is a long distance number if you are not living in the United States. But if you are living around Washington metropolitan area, you can just use the 240 number and then you can send a WhatsApp message and we can have a lot of biblical studies with you. May God bless you and may God give you 
the opportunity to understand my brother and my sister we are living in a very dangerous world but god has something better for you and i and through his way we can see afar and understand what god has prepared for us be very happy study the way that has come to you and look at all those lessons and then understand that if you haven't been baptized you need the true baptism may god bless you and may god protect you we will meet next time with the topic on the one baptism and all those arguments presented god bless you with you as we bring our lesson to an end this time amen